Listen to that. That's badass. Oh, I just want to watch it. And Jason is handling his business. Jason is not to be fucked with. That is Levi. He got his hair cut recently and he looks gorgeous and he loves the camera. That's why he's not moving. That This is not a picture. That's lit We're still in video mode, people. And he won't move. But maybe I can get his tail to wag. Who's a good boy? There he is. There's a good boy. You see that tail wagging? Who's the good boy? Yeah, you're the good boy. Good morning, everybody. I just woke up, like not too long ago, but uh, you know, no rest for the wicked, right? We're gonna do a brand new Drum Dumbs Watches. Holly Klein actually uh, recommended that I do another one of these because I haven't done one in ages. So uh, I posted a vote on social media. It was like the, the thing, not the thing. It's really early, guys, sorry. It was between Freddy versus Jason, Scream. Those two were like neck and neck. So I'll definitely be doing a Scream one here soon. And there were two others too. I'll, I'll have it right here so you guys can see. Because like I said, I just woke up. It's, it's tough. But uh, looking forward to doing this. Uh, we're going to go to the Evil Air now. We're going to grab that box set. So turning on the lights. It's dark. But don't be afraid. Hold on. Now it's nice and bright. Uh, turning the camera over to the evil lair. Oh, there's roller skate skinny. Uh, during this, I'll come back to the evil lair and I'll I'll show you some of the new stuff that I got on here. Like that camera right there, I bought that for a purpose. Actually, that is a 19. I think it's a 1977 Keystone camera uh, with the little flash bulb here at the top. So, but uh, yeah, we got to go over here the Linda Blair you beautiful creature you need to move out of the way so I can get this beauty right here signed by Kane Hodder himself and now we're gonna take this in there we're gonna pop out Freddy versus Jason and boy am I looking forward to doing this one too Freddy versus Jason is such a fun movie and there were people that said that Scream is uh, actually the better movie but Freddy vs. Jason is just a funner movie to discuss. Is funner a word? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, uh, these Drum Dumbs Watches, if this is your first one, these are they're kind of long videos, and uh, it's kind of uh, a review commentary hybrid where I just watch movies on that screen right there. So you're going to see that screen. You're going to see me talking on that stool in front of that screen. Yeah, it's, it's very, uh, you know, I got my hair down in it, so to speak. But uh, it's a lot of fun. So, anyway, let's get this thing going. Focus. Let me get my focus here. Got my my freaking light on. It's pretty bright. Let me go to the other side here. Okay, we are ready to go. We're gonna uh, hit play now for Freddy vs. Jason. And I got my. Uh, ooh, that is bright. I have my LED light there, so I can get, put some light on the face. If I turn this on, you guys can see what I'm looking at right now. There's my LED light. I got it at 20% right now. That's how bright that thing gets. Ooh, I love that opening where you get a little bit of the scores for both movies. Starts off with the Nightmare score, which I prefer that score over the Friday score, but they're both iconic. But yeah, I'm going to be using two cameras today. I'm going to be using my blog camera here, and I'm going to be using my normal DSLR and they get right into it. I love how they explain how they get these two together right away. So that way we can just have fun for the rest of the movie. And that's exactly what they do. You know, Freddie uses Jason to get access to the Elm Street kids. So I think it works. I think it works really well, actually. And there he is, the great Robert England. This is his last turn in as the character of. Uh, Freddy Krueger, which is awesome. Um, he's old. He's old now. He's up there, like in the 70s. So the chances of him coming back to play the character, even though I know he did it recently in a commercial, are kind of slim. But um, you know, Robert England was Freddy Krueger. Even people that don't 
like the franchise that much, still have to admit that Robert England was, he was an actor, he was a great actor. And you have to act to be able to uh, portray Freddy. Of course you have all the burns, you have all that stuff, but this is a vocal character. And if you had this guy who couldn't act with all that makeup on, it would be silly. So, yeah, it works perfectly. Yeah, but you get the little recap too from all the Nightmare movies. Oh, I love the Nightmare movies. I love, I love like the first half of the Nightmare movies. Uh, one through four. Actually, I like five too. Five's balls crazy, but I still like it. Yeah, there's uh, you had Alice and Nancy there. I'd like to see both of them team up in a movie together against Freddy. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah, I um, I'm Team Freddy on this one. I got my Freddy shirt on. Um, I've always preferred Freddy over Jason. Because Jason is kind of a Michael Myers, I don't want to say ripoff because he definitely has his differences, but he definitely has his strong similarities too. But Jason is a fun character. He's a, he's a really fun character, and I like a lot of those Friday the 13th movies as well. And uh, we got to get the, uh, what we all, you know, a big part of this franchise, we have to get that out of the way first. This movie has everything in it. You know, you get, you get the, the hot girls, you get the nudity. You get the great kills. Even though I think Freddy only kills one person technically in this movie. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe two. I think just one though. You know, a lot of times he just tees up Jason and Jason takes care of the business. But yeah, looking, uh, looking forward to getting into these. Um, as a matter of fact, let me get my phone. I'm gonna snap a pic and then I'm gonna post it on Instagram and uh, we can get this thing going because a big part of these D-Watches is that I, it's interactive. I, I read your comments, uh, you know, so I, you get to discuss the movie as I get to discuss the movie. You know, I read those and then we share it in this whole thing. So it's really fun. But uh, we got to see Jason, you know, knocking one off right away. And we're not even five minutes into the movie. There's always something cool about uh, horror movies in the woods especially at night. It's just a really fun concept, you know? But if we go into the backstory of this too, you know, there must have been hundreds of scripts for a Freddy vs. Jason. This is something that they were trying to get off the ground ever since Jason Goes to Hell. And um, you'd think that they would have made the movie quicker. Oh, great kill there. That's a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, there was a lot of red tape, there was a lot of legal tape to go through. Uh, Paramount owned the Friday franchise at the time. Uh, actually, you know, when Jason Goes to Hell came out, New Line owned both properties. So, um, Jason Goes to Hell came out in 93, and this movie came out 10 years later. So, that can kind of tell you how long it took to, to make these this movie. Nice little cameo from uh, Pamela Boy, he's in here too. You know, really, you know, from like an exposition standpoint, all they had to do is insert just a couple of lines of dialogue here to set up the chess pieces. You know, because once they did that, and they did it very well, actually, then, you know, you could just back away and have fun with it. And this is like, in terms of fun, I think Freddy vs. Jason, out of both franchises, is one of the funnest movies. And Jason coming back out of the ground... So, you know, continuity-wise, the previous movies still exist. Love the makeup on uh, Freddy in this, too. There we go. We'll get our opening titles. Ronnie Yu directed this. Great stuff. Ronnie Yu, we all know who did uh, Bride of Chucky. But he had never seen... I don't think he had seen any of the movies in both franchises before. And uh, I guess he didn't need to, you know. He just... Maybe it's a good thing that he didn't, you know, the, the writers took care of all the uh, tying the loose ends and everything, connecting this one to the uh, previous franchises, but uh, Ronnie Yu came in uh, and just, you know, made a fun movie. Did what he did, uh, he did what he does best. And, and Bride of Chucky proved that. Bride of Chucky is such a fun movie. Got some heavy hitters uh, for stars in this one too, you know. Uh, at the time, they weren't heavy hitters. But, but uh, you know, Monica Kina, I'm talking B-movie, horror heavy hitters. Um, Catherine Isabel, of course. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, you had a fun, you know, uh, a, a really fun, energetic young cast in this. And uh, I think they, they fit very well. You know, I cared about the human characters in this movie. 
as much as I did Freddy and Jason, which is not an easy thing to do in these movies. But and you can see, like, I'm, I'm looking for spots to turn off the camera and go to another scene, but this is one of those movies just like, there's no fat, really. It just, boom, 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 boom. Yep, and you got these douchebag guys. They're um, definitely the least interesting out of the whole movie, the, the douchebag guys. It fits the recipe of, you know, slasher movies. We, we like to see the young, attractive girls get killed. That's what we want to see. Or survive. There's just something more uh, fun about watching a girl scream than a guy scream. I don't know. It's just awkward when a guy screams. So, But there's Levi right there. I got to go get a monster. I need a monster. I've literally had about three hours sleep um, last night. My daughter had a wedding the other day. Um, quick peek into the fridge. Let me see if I might grab. That's why I love this vlog camera. I can just, you know, be on the fly, on the go. Don't judge me by what's in my refrigerator. And my wife actually painted that right there. The little M MTV Cribs action for you. But yeah, my wife actually painted that. It's two paintings. The talent this woman has is amazing. Uh, she painted that one right there too. She did not paint that one. But uh, she did paint the back wall though. So the back wall, kind of like an 80s retro style, but uh, then we found this painting, I believe, at Kirtland's or one of those stores in town. And it, it, uh, it uh, matched the vibe of the wall, I guess. But yeah, there's my uh, LED light. And then you can see my DSLR camera. That thing is still going strong almost five years in. And here, Kane Hodder was so nice. Me and him struck up a conversation when we were at, uh, when I was at Spooky Empire. And we talked for like a good 10 minutes. He was the coolest celebrity you could ever meet. And you know, as we were talking, he literally said, hey, do you want me to sign the, the uh, booklet inside the tin case as well? And I said, really, you would do that? Thank you, good sir. He, he was so kind. And I really enjoyed talking with Kane Hodder. And we were talking about this movie right here, Freddy vs. Jason. And he's, it still hurts him. It still hurts him that he wasn't in the movie because he loves that character so much. And that opportunity to get on screen with Robert England uh, was irresistible. And it's a shame that he couldn't be in this movie. Uh, because the Jason in this movie is pretty much just a walking corpse. He doesn't really do too much. Uh, Richard Kurzinger. And then uh, there is Catherine Isabel. And uh, we, we already have a, a sex scene in the movie, but uh, we got the bed folding kill coming up here, which is really cool. That guy's a dick. Now, I think this must have been right after Ginger Snaps. I'm not sure. It's around that area. No, no, this would, this would be after Ginger Snaps because Ginger Snaps came out, I think, in like 2000, something like that, 2001. But, uh, you know, that's not Catherine Isabel. That is a body double. And leave it to me to know my uh, actor's facts in these slasher movies. But, oh yeah, that's a really well-directed scene though. You can see how important lighting is in a, in a uh, horror movie. And you can see that nice blue lighting there. And you guys have almost watched everything up to this point with me. Like I said, no fat to chew on in Freddy vs. Jason. And that's straight up Ronnie U right there. That's that's his style. But uh, you know, this movie really kicks up the intensity early on. You know, it's it's oh shit all the way. <laughs> that's a great way to start it. This this always makes me think of Halloween Four with the stairs, the angle 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 down the stairs. You want to see Loomis come in there and say no, but unfortunately that doesn't happen. Some pretty solid nightmare sequences in this too. Um, we always like to see children in those nightmare movies. There's just something creepy about them. And of course the one, two, Freddy's coming for you. But uh, this little, uh, yeah, here we go. We got the jump rope and everything. I mean, they really honor both of these franchises so well. And I gotta, I gotta give it up for Monica Keena in this. I mean, yes, yeah, she's easy on the eyes, but acting 
uh, in a horror movie is not that easy. And uh, believe me, I know because um, I'm trying to put together a fan film right now, and I, and I went out to do some like practice shots and stuff with my wife, and the, the you know you really have to go there, you really have to emote. And uh, Monica Kina, I mean, she I think she does it like the best of them in this. You know, she keeps you invested. She make she makes you think that this is real. And th it's a silly slasher movie, but you still have to have you know that great horror acting in there and I think she really delivers there's Levi and I just posted on killer flicks and um, Instagram so I'm gonna be reading those comments today I usually do Twitter too but it, then the episode gets so engulfed in comment reading and shout outs and those are fun and all but I don't want to make the you know half the video that uh, because then it, it can get boring to to some of the viewers. So I've heard those complaints before. I know that. that there's Freddy. That's, this is a nice little nightmare sequence. Yeah, but, you know, they set you up to think Freddy's going to kill this kid, and he doesn't. He just sets it up for Jason to do it because he, he can't get the fear out yet, you know? They have to be afraid of Freddy. And right now they're just not afraid. Yeah, so Jason already cut off the guy's head. I mean, Jason racks up a body count in this movie. And um, the writers of this, Mark Swift, Damian, Shannon, um, I wonder if they took that into consideration. Like, hey, why are we like giving all the kills to Jason in this movie? Obviously, it fit into the story. You know, the story is the kids aren't scared of Fred, uh, Freddy yet. So it, it didn't bother me uh, that much. You know, uh, you do have... Uh, a couple of really good kill scenes that involve Fred. He doesn't actually give you the punchline, but he he plays a big part. You know, he led these kids to Jason. There's uh, Jason Ritter, uh, the late John Ritter's son. And speaking of acting, this kid, Brendan Fletcher, um, damn, really good actor. And I've actually seen him in a lot of things since Freddy vs. Jason. Not surprising. So we just finished up the scene with Will and Mark. Um, I do have a thing for, like, sanitariums and mental institutions and horror movies the two just go together like peanut butter and jelly or chocolate and peanut butter take your pick but uh this is probably one of the best scenes of the movie um not counting i guess the final showdown and there's linderman that guy is such an underrated actor especially in the comedy department because if you've seen um just friends he steals every scene in that movie. He plays the brother of Ryan Reynolds, and he's so freaking hilarious. There's uh, Monica Keene again. She's vibing to the rave. Yeah, but Linderman, man, Kelly Rowland just really treats him like shit in this movie. Poor kid. But uh, love this scene. It's so, uh, I don't know, the whole thing is just beautifully put together. You know, lighting the cornfield on fire and all that. Which, it's also cool to see a cornfield in a, uh, a Freddy or Jason movie. I mean, I just saw, just to timestamp this, I just saw uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And my favorite scene in that was definitely the cornfield scene with the scarecrow, Harold. And he just told her off. He said, you know what? Enough of your shit, Kelly Rowland. Is that the girl from The Hills Have Eyes? It sure does look like her. The Australian actress. Leela would know who that is. But uh, we have a great uh, kill scene coming up here. To, well, I mean, there's multiple kill scenes in this. But you, you got the one with Catherine Isabel where she falls asleep. This guy's... Um, talk about, like, social, the Me Too movement and social topics. This predates all that with, you know, rape at a party. I mean, this is something that's been going on since, I guess, college started. Right, guys? <laughs> God, I'm so stupid. But, uh, yeah, you get my point. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to that scene, too, when they get into the dream sequence. And, you know, it's all, it's all like, red-tinted and everything. It's just, I, I love the dream sequences in the Nightmare movies. They really play with the colors, and I don't know, they're almost, like, euphoric. So, yeah, I mean, this movie just does not let up. It does not stop. It's such a fun movie. I'm going to move in. We're going to move into the evil lair real quick. Actually... I just picked this up too, guys. 
And I just got this like steady cam in the mail not too long ago. I haven't, uh, I haven't really tried it out too much yet, but um, I kind of got it calibrated. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll plug the uh, the DSL. I don't know. That might be too much work. But uh, you know, the great steady cam. That's uh, Rocky. I think was one of the first movies to use the steady cam. Then Dean Cundey used it in Halloween. And it's the rest is history. It's used every day in television now. It's such a useful tool to get those quick shots. And you can already tell that this is going to be a long D watch, guys. These are usually around 30 minutes at a minimum. But uh, they can go all the way up to like an hour. I love that transition there, you know, from... It's like her stepping in that um, mech room. It transitions from the real world, the real world to the nightmare world. And you think for sure that uh, this is going to be Freddy... Oh, there's, there's a callback. I forgot about that scene. Callback to the first movie. And you get the Billy Idol lookalike there. He's going to take advantage of Catherine Isabel, which is horrible. And it is a real issue, too. Like, any of you women that have been in college and have went through, um, you know, atrocities like that, my heart goes out to you. Seriously. Because the worst thing a man can do is take advantage of a woman, especially while she's asleep. To me, you are the biggest piece of shit on the planet if you do something like that. Alcohol or not. But yeah, the Boiler Room is like a staple to the Nightmare franchise. I've always loved the Boiler Room. There he is. Look at that. Great scene. I'm going to turn it up a little bit so you guys can hear it. Ooh. And then you got Jason lurking. So they, I guess they did do this kill first, and this is what kicks off the uh, the killing spree. It's been a while since I've seen this, but then you know, yeah, I guess one of the one of the uh, young people they notice her laying there on the uh, on the ground, and then that's what you know causes the panic. It's a nice shot. Always like those, you know, those eye behind the peephole shot, or you know, behind the blinds. It's just, you know, really effective in horror. You're always looking for these creative ways to make your shot look interesting. And yeah, he, he misses his chance. And this is what kicks off, kicks off the whole thing. Then Freddy realizes he's got a problem. Now he has to deal with Jason. I think Kane Hodder would have, like, I'm sure every time Kane Hodder watches this cornfield scene, he probably dies a little bit inside because he probably would have had a field day with this scene. I love this scene right here when he uh, punches the guy's head around. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> now, if that was Arnold Schwarzenegger, there would have been one like funny one-liner in there. I guarantee you. Now, if you can add fire to any kind of kill scene, especially with one of these icons, then it makes it even cooler. Now this scene right here is straight up uh, a Freddy type of thing. You know, Freddy always likes to toy with his victims, especially his female victims, in a sexual way. Uh, and he's using the dad to do that, which makes it even creepier because it's the dad. And you, you know, you get some of those like Dutch angles and uh, there, there we go. Yeah, it's just, in terms of like camera work, the Nightmare series is so much more interesting because they don't do just the straight on shots, you know, they, they play around, they get creative with things. Because, you know, when you're dealing with the dream world, uh, everything is a little bit um, more open, you know, not grounded. That, that's the word I'm looking for. It definitely doesn't feel grounded. Kelly Rowland, it just came to me. Her name's Kelly Rowland. This is messed up. She's the, guy, she's the one that gets the got your nose, which is a really fun scene. Um, so we already got some uh, shout outs rolling in here on Killer Flicks. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of these. Neil Tambaugh says, me, 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 please. Brandon Tabato, rage. 
Uh, Brandon, I was actually going to mention if we did Scream, but I'll mention it now. Brandon does have his own Scream fan film uh, called Ghostface. Definitely check that out on YouTube uh, if you get a chance. Just type in Brandon Tabato Ghostface or something like that, and it'll come up. Or Ghostface fan film. It's awesome. Uh, Jeff Griffith, yo, Freddy vs. Jason, dope. You best believe I want a shout out. You got one. Tiffany Moses, what's up, Tiff? Tiff originally wanted Scream. She voted for Scream, and then I said Freddy vs. Jason won, and she's like, I kind of want that one anyway because it's funner, which is kind of what I, what I mentioned at the beginning. So big shout out to you, Tiffany. Uh, Travis Rakin says, shout out to the soundtrack. Thank you so much. Oh my God, you reminded me. I was actually going to talk about that. Still one of the best metal albums out there for a movie. It is probably my number one most listened to metal album soundtrack I, seriously that one and trick-or-treat from 1986 both those soundtracks are, are my two favorites uh destin williams my youtube channel destination station uh that would be awesome i'm about to make a video about the actor i would like to don the freddy glove be looking out for that one so his youtube channel is destination station be sure to check it out yeah, this kid brendan fletcher I'm, I'm telling you he really delivers a lot of good actors in this movie actually uh Sigurder Thor Johnson, love that name, fun movie. Jason Stewart says, I would like a shout out, been following your channel a long time now, and I always look forward to your videos. You rock, Lee. Thank you, James, I appreciate that, man. You rock. The Great Dan Wolf, such a great friend, one of the funniest people I've ever met. He says, shout out all over my face. There you go. Monty, Lamont Smith says, I'd like one, Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, me, and, me and Monica way back. Like, he's been doing this probably longer than I have. Um, so, uh, your friendship's been very cherished, Monty. Been very cherished. What the hell? Matt Moore, shout me out. Team Fred. Team Freddy over here. Got my t-shirt. Sammy Klinger, love this movie. The showdown between Freddy vs. Jason is freaking awesome. I can't wait to get to that, by the way, guys. Daryl Haynes says, yes, please, would love a shout out. Uh, Sigur Thor Johnson again I will take a shout out as well would you kindly Steve Testa I wouldn't mind a shout out Freddy died by fire Jason by water how can we use it iconic yeah a lot of great little um, plot line antidotes sprinkled throughout this script that work very well Patrick Moran says shout out love this movie saw it opening day and three times in the movies. I was actually in Korea when this came out in theaters, and it breaks my heart still to this day that I didn't get to see this showdown on the big screen. That that theater must have been so fun. Uh, Desi Jeffers says, I will take a shout out. Also, this movie bothers me so much because I hated what they did to Jason. I, I, I kind of agree with you. Uh, he looked so sleepy in this movie. That's a perfect way to describe it. Sleepy. Uh, Wolf Myers, who uh, just as of today is a new mod on Killer Flicks. So congratulations, Wolf. Definitely check out his channel, guys. Wolfman's got Nards. Uh, I'll take one of those shout-outs if you have any left. Hell yeah. Justin Davis says, I remember seeing this in the theaters. Not sure I've watched it since then. What? Man, I watch this one like at least once a year. It's just so fun. Uh, Aiden Edwards says, shout-out. Uh, this movie's awesome. Always on my list to watch and just a fun slasher. Amanda Block. Oh, me please. Jared Von Jekyll, who designed that mask that I'm going to show you here in a few minutes uh, in the Evil Lair. Um, he, uh, amongst Dead Things is his Instagram. Guy is so freaking talented uh, with mask making. Barry Wilner, good movie. Jason Nike, hey Lee, great movie. Would love a shout out. The character Mark is so underrated. Loved how he showed so much fear. Yes, yeah, I think he's talking about Brendan Fletcher, him. He is so good in this movie. Rogelio Duran de la Garza. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Good sir. Me, I'll take a shout out all the way to Tulum, Mexico. That is badass. Where I'm on a job assignment. Huge fan of both sagas. Waited 10 years for this to happen. Hated that Kane was not involved. In the end, uh, talked to both Kane and England about the POV of this film. And theirs on different kinds. That's cool. I almost got to meet Robert England and then... They shut down the convention because of a hurricane. So, but I did meet Kane Hodder. Uh, John Saban, I'd love a shout out. If I could meet Robert England one day and have him sign that box set too, this tin right here, 
That would be amazing. That'd be amazing. And you know, I can imagine like from a directing standpoint, from a safety stand standpoint, Ronnie, you must have been like, this could really get out of hand because we're in an active cornfield. Oh, that's a cool shot. But you know, I mean, anytime you're playing with fire, um, excuse the, the phrase, but anytime you're playing with fire on a film set, I'm sure that from a safety standpoint, there's a there's a huge oh shit factor. You know, you got to be careful with this stuff. And we've never seen anything like this in a Friday movie with Jason just killing this many people at once. And maybe they were trying to one up the uh, the lab massacre in Halloween Six, uh, which was a really awesome scene because you had Myers killing a dozen doctors or whatever. So yeah, they definitely upped it. And it sets up Jason as this, you know, major threat. That's another thing I like about this. The neighborhood, you know, it, it looks it looks like a Haddonfield type neighborhood, suburban type neighborhood. The Elm Street house is right down the street from one of the Halloween houses. So, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's another great thing that separates the Halloween franchise from the Friday franchise. Because, you, you know, take your pick. You can have your slasher movie in suburbia or you can have your slasher movie in the woods. You know, I think if Friday would have taken place in suburbia, then we'd have a little bit more conflict there, a little bit more controversy amongst the fans. But, uh, you know, it's like you can have your cake and you can eat it too. I love both franchises. Um, every summer, I love to watch Friday movies. Every fall, I love to watch Halloween movies. Now, this is another great creepy nightmare scene with Zach Ward, Scott Farkas. And I... I remember mentioning this about a, a year ago when they were talking about who could replace Robert England. I think he'd actually be a really good uh, Freddy, if I'm being honest. Zach Ward. Is that right, Zach Ward? I think it's Zach Ward. Really good nightmare. There's a lot of good nightmare sequences throughout this movie. Um, and you could kind of compare this to what Mark Patton did in part two. You know, it's, um, he's one of the, the actors, uh, you know, male actors that held his own against Freddy and made it interesting. You know, because like I said, usually you're wanting to see females go against Freddy. It just makes it more interesting. But this is another case of that. I think it, I think it works out. Yeah, that's a really cool shot right there. You know, I like that they took these characters seriously. They didn't make it, you know, it is fun, but they didn't make it just a straight up comedy or anything like that. You know, you do have those uh, really serious oh shit moments throughout this, especially concerning Freddy. You, and you got the detective thing in here. Now, we're not getting John Saxon in this movie or anything like that, but you know, that, that still plays a part in this. You know, it's always fun to have these detectives in uh, slasher movies. I even posted a, a thing on Killer Flicks, one of the questions of the day, like, uh, give me a horror movie that has, you know, some fun cop characters. And there's so many actually to mention. Of course, Maniac Cop came up, but uh, I mean, you can tie a lot of horror movies to cop, you know, law enforcement. And a big shout out to Michael Mims, who actually is a New York City police officer. Hope you don't mind me saying that, Michael. But he has uh, been with Killer Flicks for such a long time now, probably since we started. And uh, just really one of the most awesome dudes. Never noticed that picture of George Bush behind uh, the sheriff there. And what is it about car accidents in slasher movies? First off, Monica Keena's name in this movie is Lori. So that's definitely a shout out to Halloween. And then she just stated that her mother died in a car accident. Whereas Jamie Lloyd's mother, Lori, died in a car accident in Halloween 4. So... It's interesting, you know, how the writers, they, they try to include other franchises uh, with these two franchises, especially Halloween. But I'm going to go to Instagram now and see if we have any uh, shout-outs here. But uh, Jay Chirula says, love this movie. A really cool spin on two iconic slashers. Alex Jab Jabagarn, that would be cool, Freddy vs. Jason, is such a great slasher. It's a movie I can watch over and over and never get tired of. Yep. Uh, amongst dead things, Von Jekyll Art, just mentioned him, uh, being dead wasn't a problem, but being forgotten, now that's a bitch. Stay Metal Ray said, I'd be honored 
to have my official first official drum dumb shout out ps is it august 30th yet of course he's talking about that new tool album fear inoculum god i can't wait for that I, I, i've been in a tool mood for like ever since that single came out i've been listening to the back catalog again uh, i was just riding yesterday you listened to third eye uh it's just if you're not a tool fan definitely jump on board Stay Metal Ray. He's going to be part of 31 Days of October this year, too. That's official, I'm saying. Because one thing I like to do in 31 Days of October is bring in creators that might not necessarily be like movie talk creators, but he's a, he's a metal guitarist. So he can maybe like throw in some, some metal guitar in there and tie it with horror. That's the big thing. If you do horror, if you can make it horror in some way, then that's all I ask. Um... Fader Ravenwind Sword Me. This looks fun already. Hell yeah, it is. Vincent Whitener says, No matter how many times I watch this movie, I still have a fun time with it. One of the first horror movies I seen when I was younger and my grandma showed me it. And I'm sure that's what gave me the horror bug. Uh, Suzette. What's up, Suzette? All the way from Australia. How are you doing? Me. Uh, Poor Man 310 right here, dude. Thomas Baker. Me. Jordan Fadeaway. Uh, Carson B4. Can I have a shout out, please? There's your shout out, Carson. Do your thing, cuz. Love that channel name. I still don't have a problem with that line, guys. Not at all. It, it fits uh, in with the Texas franchise as far as the style of the franchise and the characters. Such a fun movie. Love the scene and the crops. Yes. Um, Cleasy. Jum Dums, I would love a shout out. It's pronounced C Lee Easy. C Lee Easy, so I got it right. Thank you. Uh, thanks, man. Big supporter of the channel and content. Freddy vs. Jason is a blast. First nightmare movie I was able to see in a theater. Awesome. And then Batman 252387. Here, please. Good shout outs, guys. And this stoner dude, this is the only actor to be in a movie with Michael, Freddy, and Jason. Because he was also in Halloween Resurrection. So he timed it just right. Now, if I had to point any cons at this movie, because there's, there's definitely some cons. I think um, the stoner aspect to it didn't really work that well for me. And especially, you know, later when you got that, like, I guess you can call it the Freddy Slug. Uh, you know, they're going for a little bit of the psychedelic there, but... Uh, didn't really grab me that well. But uh, let's let's go into the uh, evil lair real quick here. Because I've been meaning to get, get in there so I can look around. But th there's just so much there's so much uh, meat in that movie. Okay, so now we are in the evil lair. And uh, just to take a quick look behind the scenes. I literally used my stand out there for my LED light. But there's my record player. I always put that on when I'm about to record just to kind of get me going, get me in the mood. Uh, because, you know, you got to get those creative juices flowing. And usually it's like Goblin or Halloween. Um, you know, I got four four uh, albums up here at the ready. And then back here, you can see some of the other albums. A lot of these uh, Beth S. sent me, who is such a sweetheart, the Rocky Three, because we're, we're both big Rocky fans. And uh, Beth, can't thank you enough. There's my It Follows soundtrack, though. My wife got me for Christmas. Uh, this, <laughs> I love that. Whitney, Whitney, I'm sorry. Olivia Newton-John. Beth, can't thank you enough for that one. She's so gorgeous. Uh, yeah, a lot of great stuff here. Grease soundtrack, Dirty Dancing. So, yeah, definitely check out Beth S's channel. It is uh, B-Side Records. A lot of great vinyl and retro stuff on there. Uh, but yeah, here's that camera I was talking about. Like I said, it's like a 1977. I ordered that off of eBay, and it's, you know, for such an old camera, it's in great condition. But I was going to use it as kind of a prop for my uh, my fan film. And speaking of Von Jekyll art, this, amongst dead things, this is the mask that he uh, sent me. That's in one of the unboxes in my uh, on my channel. So I, I think if you type in, like, Halloween mask unbox or something like that you can find it but my reaction when I pulled that thing out of the box I was just floored like wow that is amazing got to show this off too this is a gift that uh, one of my subscribers 
sent me this like Japanese, what is it? Shunya Yamashita. Shunya Yamashita. Michael Myers. It's a female Michael Myers. And that thing is just gorgeous. And then there's the uh, Halloween 2018 Myers, uh, the NECA Myers in the back. Uh, and a lot of this stuff I've, I've shown you guys in the past, but I definitely want to show you this since we're doing Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, that is Jason from part five. It's not Roy. It's actually Jason because Jason is in the movie for a second. But uh, yeah, look at that. Love that. Alice, sweet Alice. I got to get that uh, arrow release. Uh, I've seen it online. It looks beautiful. And um, down here, I'm all over the place. But yeah, there's Halloween 5 on VHS. Uh, another one of my subscribers sent me. And uh, my battery is getting low here, so I got to make this one quick so I can uh, reload. But Roller Skate Skinny, my wife's book. Go on Amazon, get the book. I promise you, you will love the book. It's it's if it's in the vein of like Gone Girl and Catcher in the Rye, but uh, my wife really put a lot of uh, effort into this book. So definitely, definitely go to Amazon and check it out if you can. And uh, Sean Michael Cadlick. That Halloween forehead prop is so beautiful. Thank you so much, brother. I love that thing. And I, Dave McRae actually brought this up the other day that he would love to see a Halloween four movie that just centers on that 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 mask. You know, what if Michael wore that that uh, bandage throughout the whole movie? How cool would that have been? And um, things that you never see, real quick. There's the Hulk figure. Uh, my buddy Matt Register. He he made that with a 3D printer and sent it to me. Super badass. There's the Halloween 6 mask that I used to have that you used to see in my videos. Rob Zombie's Halloween figure. A lot of stuff down here that you don't see. There's the Halloween DVD collection. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Terrifier signed by David Howard Thornton. Uh, uh, and the director. So, Damien Leon. Yeah. And my favorite VHS cover ever. I spit on your grave. Yeah, yeah, this scene right here, man, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't jive with me that well. It, d it doesn't really fit in a slasher movie. To me. I don't know, I don't really care for the music in the background. It, t it takes me out of what's going on because, you know, this is an intense movie. Especially concerning Freddy. And so then it comes to like a screeching halt, tonally. Once they throw that thing in there. So, that's my issues with that. But then they jump into that stuff, which is really cool. That's a creepy sequence right there. And it just screams Nightmare on Elm Street. Love the use of colors in all the Nightmare sequences. You know, the blues, the reds. Uh, and especially like uh, the the, uh, the blacks in the background, the shadows. Yeah, and that's it's kind of a CGI mess too, that, that scene. But, I mean, we're getting ever so close to the, the matchup. Uh, you know, they're, they get a hold of Jason. They're able to knock him out. And then they're going to wake him up to take on Freddy. So, looking forward to getting to that. Okay, here we go. He just pumped. Oh, that's, that's a great kill, too. Right after he pumps it, then uh, Jason, like, cuts him in half. And it gets, uh, it gets pretty gross later, too, because... Kelly Rowland has to give Jason mouth to mouth, which is horrible. Like, would you rather do that or would you rather take on Jason alive or would you rather give him mouth to mouth? I'd have to think about that one. Yep, and now he's in the dream world and this is a scene where a lot of people had problems with it because uh, Jason drowned, or you know, he's afraid of water, which to me, it, until I heard about this controversy, it never bothered me because he drowned. Jason drowned in the first movie, and he comes back out of the water. So it fits in with uh, the story. But uh, in the dream world, Freddy definitely has the upper hand. You know, I mean, really, Jason doesn't even stand a chance because Freddy can pretty much, you know, teleport from place to place. He's It's his world. So the only way for... Jason to really beat him is to get Freddy into his world. 
you know, you cut off his arm, he grows it right back. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah, Robert England had a lot of fun with this role, but I remember him saying in the back, behind the scenes, that uh, he much preferred going up against, like, Nancy and Alice uh, instead of Jason because he's an older guy. Even when he shot this movie, he was an older guy, and he said physically it was very demanding. And, you know, that, I mean, starting here, the two of these characters fighting, you, they might, it must have been at least like a week-long shoot. So I can imagine he was pretty beat up by the end of this thing, I would think. But yeah, I'm glad they did have like a dream sequence fight and then a real-world fight. You know, you can kind of play around there. I mean, because to be honest, there's no way that Freddy would be able to even take on Jason in the real world. At all. But I guess the same could be said about, uh, you know, Jason in the dream world. You know, but they definitely delivered because, you know, you could have put out a movie where the fight only lasted, you know, for five minutes at the end or something like that. But no, they really wanted to give the audience, you know, the full meal, I guess, so to speak. You know, when you, when you left, you were like, okay, I'm sick of them fighting. And they, they almost got you there. So we got, we got blue, we got red, and now we got green. So, so many colors. Definitely looks interesting, though. Yeah, see, he's afraid of the water. I, I see, I guess I do see the complaints because in, in a lot of the Friday movies, you saw, like, Jason fully immersed in the water. Um, you know, I mean, he drowned between part six and part seven. He was stuck underwater for years. So, I, I guess I see what, what the audience is saying there. Now, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, one of the guys that worked at New Line, Jeffrey Katz, he was one of the big reasons why Kane Hodder wasn't able to come back. Like, he did not like Kane Hodder as Jason. And so, you know, he, he was a person of power, and so he was able to make that not happen. Now, of course, I don't know the full story behind all that. I mean, all we know is what we've seen in, like, documentaries and whatnot. So I'm sure there's a lot more to that story there. And I, it's almost like they uh, insinuate that Freddy is Jason's father, or he could have been his father, you know, because he's having sex. He might have had sex with Pamela Voorhees. But uh, they don't, they only scratch the surface with these theories, though. You know, they don't, like, dig way too deep. So, purple. We have purple now. This was a fun little nightmare sequence. You know, how irresistible is it to have a nightmare sequence at Camp Crystal Lake, you know, and to play around with that young Jason character? You know, seeing all the kids bullying him and then having Freddy as one of the camp counselors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this bitch is dead on her feet. <laughs> so does that mean that Freddy's a corpse fucker? I thought that was reserved for Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Yeah, so they put Lori to sleep so she could be in the dream world and she's gonna try to pull Jason out. I do love that they fought on the pier too. Really badass sequence at the end. Yeah, Jason, I mean, Freddy has a lot of fun with Jason throughout this movie, you know. Like psychologically, Freddy really has the upper hand. You know, he's just a, you know, he's a much smarter character. Uh, it's, we're talking opposite ends of the spectrum here. So, and he uses that to his advantage because, you know, as physically, of course, he's no match for Jason, but mentally, he's, he's got him far outmatched. And here we go. This is the, uh, this is where Kelly Rowland earned her money. I think I read somewhere too, behind the scenes, like she really hated doing this, this part. Ugh. Let me get close up on that. Poor girl. <laughs> yep, and there it is. He's up. No, I was wrong. So Lori doesn't have to pull Jason. She's got to pull Freddy out of the dream world. That's what it is. Okay. Like I said, it's been a while since I've seen this, guys, okay? So now she's going to pull him out. Oh, that's a badass scene right there. Hell yeah. Looks kind of like Wishmaster there. I wonder why they changed the makeup for this one particular sequence. 
Because, I mean, Freddy already looks creepy enough. So, yeah, I mean, this last sequence goes on for a long time, guys. Welcome to my world, bitch. They really completely built up the tension, like, you know, bit by bit by bit. So once they finally got here to the showdown, you can't even breathe. This film is shot so beautifully, too. I never realized how great this movie looks. But we're, we're going to be at the... Now we're at the real world fight. So it's going to be a nice, long, meaty fight. I'm going to start you off with some more shout-outs from Killer Flicks. Uh, thank you all that uh, love to participate in these things as well. It just makes it a fun part of this. And after the end of it, I'll probably go to the Evil Lair and read the rest of the shout-outs if I need to. Yep, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. He, yeah, Freddy just got pulled out. Listen to that. That's badass. Oh, I just want to watch it. And Jason is handling his business. Jason is not to be fucked with. And this ends up being one of the bloodiest freaking battles ever, too. It's, it's, it's like you almost get sick of blood by the end of this thing. Okay, here, here we go. We're going to do the shout-outs now. So, Brendan Tiggy says, I'll take a got your nose, Brendan. Kelly McBride says, hell yeah, wish we could get more like this, like Pinhead versus Freddy or Leatherface versus Michael Myers, Chucky versus Puppet Master. Brings me back to my childhood and days of Godzilla in the old rubber suit. Yeah, versus movies can be fun. Most of them are fun, actually. Uh, Roberto Van uh, Boomelin, Boomelin, I know I just butchered that. Shout out for my artistic mind and otherwise just a shout out would be awesome. Ricardo uh, Pacheco Rodriguez says, I want a shout out. Been following your channel since 2016 and I'm glad you've grown so much. I love Freddy and Jay versus Jason. Love how bloody they both end up in the fight. Yeah, I was just talking about that. And uh, thank you very much, Ricardo. I appreciate that. Ashley Parker says, shout out, shout out. My two rescues, Fred and Paula horror fans too isn't that and there they are and that that is great i always am for getting a dog from a shelter you know they're beautiful dogs though um katie sidebottom what's up katie a uh, shout out this movie could easily be in my top 10 if i made some serious adjustments uh, i absolutely adore this movie it's fun donald newton you get a happy birthday on a Drum Dumb's watch, Donald. Happy birthday, man. I hope you have a great one. Seriously. Jordan Knight, shout out would be awesome. Great horror crossover. Robbie Sobel, what's up, Robbie, who lives here in Florida as well. Hope to see you at the next Spooky Empire. He says, uh, shout out for sure, coffee. Make friends with it. I love that line. Uh, Jill Ellis, definitely check out her uh, Instagram. She always has like some of the most interesting horror posts. She's massive, massive horror collection. Like, her horror collection is definitely to be envied. And she's a good friend. But it's the, the horror ghoul. The horror ghoul. She's got two Instagram channels. The horror, horror ghoul, though. Look, look her up. Uh, Justin David, Matthew Meyer would love a shout out. Uh, Jen Stout, watch this with my uh, monsters, four and five, two times this weekend. Awesome. Uh, J.M. Patrick's, this movie is a lot of fun. Stupid, but fun. The fight scene at the end was choreographed like a WWE match. It sure was. And we're in the middle of it right now. And I love that Lori played like a, a big integral part and, and her boyfriend in the end of this movie. And they didn't feel like they were in the way, you know? Because that, that's the big thing you could be scared of. When these two go down, do you want your human characters to be part of that? Because it, it could be a risky proposition. Donald or Donnie Schaffer says, yo, yo, yo. I Florian Gronian. Just enjoy the fighting behind me, guys. Uh, yo, me, Aaron Penn, it would be greatly appreciated. Jan Oxman, me, Jason Miller. Hey, man, good morning. Good morning to you, Jason. Uh, Baratus Zedek, thank you. I said hi. Charlie Long, me. So, yeah, there's some more Killer Flicks shout outs. Now we're enjoying this final fight. And this is where it really starts getting bloody. Pretty inventive uh, way to, uh, you know, put a little. Creativity in the fighting there with the oxygen tanks. I wish he would have said smile you son of a bitch though because Jaws and oxygen tanks and they do so much damage to Both of them, but really Jason. 
I mean, Jason takes it in every freaking orifice you can imagine. I mean, he, he gets cut to bits, you know? But, I mean, this this is the ultimate popcorn movie, especially this last scene. I mean, you have... I, I would just wish I could have been in a theater to watch this. So glad we chose this one this time. And I'm looking forward to doing Scream, but to be able to do a D-Watch over this final fight is irresistible. We are on the dock now. We are in the pretty much the final showdown of this thing. It's it, and the blood is not going to let up. It's just going to get bloodier and bloodier and bloodier. And uh, Lori and company, they're going to set the uh, the dock ablaze. So it's going to get real hot here in a minute. Now I'm wondering if that's a stunt man there. A lot of times, if the camera's pulled back, it almost you can almost tell that it's a stuntman. And when it's close, then you see it's Robert Eng Robert England. But I could be wrong. That could be Robert England the whole way. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. Iconic shot here with Monica Kina running up on the dock. Go to hell. I think in the trailer she said, place your bets or something like that. Oh, and he punches him right. Now that would have killed, killed Freddy. Because he's in the real world, so we all know that he'd be dead. But for some reason, he, he keeps, keeps ticking. <laughs> and then shoves the machete right in his chest. Oh, and you can bet that that thumbnail is going to have one of these final shots in it. Because it just begs for the uh, thumbnail treatment. They put some uh, good money in this thing, too. You can tell there's a budget in Freddy vs. Jason. I mean, they they really go for broke here in the end. Which makes me wonder um, if that's what they're going to do with Halloween Kills and Ends. Because now they have a budget. Because, you know, $250 million worldwide for Halloween 2018. That bodes pretty well for the budget on the sequel. So... Yeah, hopefully they go for broke and have like a big ending, you know, with helicopters and bullshit like they did with, uh, well, I guess they did that with Rob Zombie's Halloween too. But we have a very wet Monica Kina coming out. You can see her little uh, tattoo there in the back, but, uh, yeah, I gotta give, give it up for the actors in this movie though. You know, they all did, Brendan Fletcher, Jason Ritter, Monica Kina, Kelly Rowland. Catherine Isabel, they all did a great job in this, you know, keeping you invested. Because if you didn't have great actors, it would just be Freddie and Jason. And, and as irresistible as that sounds, how good could it be, you know? Because you got to have a story there. You got to have actors to guide you through the story. And I think they really delivered. One final nice shot there with Jason killing Freddie with his own glove. Great stuff. Great stuff. It ain't Shakespeare, but god damn, it's fun. Damn, this movie's a blast. I had fun just watching it, doing this video. <laughs> yeah, that uh, pretty much caps it off right there. And guys, we're uh, nearing the end of this thing. This has been so fun. It flew by just like that. I can't believe it. But uh, we're going to see that last little wink here in a minute. And you know what? Why don't I, I'll just go ahead and read the rest of the uh, comments right here. Okay, so um, we're going to finish it up with these Instagram shout-outs. Tyler Duncan Reflex Studios. I would love one. Practically grew up on Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, Austin Finley. I'm probably awful, awfully too late, but I hate this god-awful abomination. Really? Like, really? You think this is an abomination? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Everybody's got their opinions. But, uh, yeah, there's your shout-out, Austin. Um, Eugen Shen 14 me. Amazing this was even made, and it's pretty decent. Exactly. I think that pretty much sums it up. The fact that we got a decent Freddy vs. Jason movie is almost a miracle. Simon Moon. What's up, brother? He says, can't wait for this. D-Watch has always been my favorite on your channel. I've seen most of them multiple times. Thank you so much, Simon. If there's still time for one more shout out, I would be very happy. Greetings and all the best, Lee. Simon, you're such a cool dude. This music, 
Oh, I love this soundtrack so much, guys. I think I'm gonna run to it after. Uh, Thomas Santiago Santos. Me, Freddy vs. Jason is a fun movie, but I think it has the worst portrayal of Jason. But overall, it's a decent slasher. Yeah, they, they definitely could have done better with the uh, with Jason. Um, Z3. Uh, Sty Gets Messy. That would be awesome. It's Sean Collins. Love when Jason folds the bed in, uh, on Gibbs boyfriend. Also, the metal music is a plus plus soundtrack. It's steak sauce. Yes, it is. Let me turn this down a little bit. Sinister Movie Reviews says I'd love a shout out for my new YouTube channel, Lee. Sinister Movie Reviews. Um, good luck, man. Uh, would be great. Tony from Sinister Movie Reviews. Keep up the great content, mate. Summer Excellence 69. That'd be super cool. Dirty Epic. I would love a shout out, Lee. Music and Movie Man. I would love a shout out, my friend. Excellent choice for the movie, by the way. And that's it for the shout outs, guys. Um... And if you didn't get a chance to get a shout out, that's because I probably already uploaded the video. But uh, thank you guys so much for another great D Watch. Um, I usually don't get to do these as often because of the schedules with my wife, with myself. But uh, we had, I had an opportunity here. I had a three hour segment. So I was like, ooh, I'm going to get a D Watch out. So anyway, thank you so much, guys. Um, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do Free for All Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And place your bets, bitch. Or is it welcome to my world, bitch?